The Quiet Warp Dancer Mark V sells itself as one of the best Sand Evastons in Cyberpunk 2077. Along with the Militech Falcon, it is one of the only two legendary iconics in the entire game and offers some pretty promising stats. It has the best time slowing capabilities of all the Sand Evastons, going right down to 10% for 8 seconds. It also increases all damage by 15% whilst active and increases crit chance by 10% and crit damage by a whopping 50%. Why then is its predecessor, the Quiet Mark IV, so often regarded as the king of Sand Evistance. By all rights, the higher tier model should win this competition. Well, it has to do with the Warp Dancer's duration and cooldown time, mostly. 8 seconds is not very long, and when you have to wait a whole 30 seconds between uses, it can feel pretty inconvenient when you're locked in the heat of battle and just want to keep transforming into the Flash or Quicksilver. I personally have always struggled with using the Warp Dancer, though I can see it has quite possibly the most potential out of all the Sand Evistance. That's why, today, we're going to strive to construct a build so powerful that it elevates the Warp Dancer to the position of unlimited power that it's so clearly intended to inhabit. We're going to be hunting down the best perks, weapons, mods, and accompanying cyberware for the ultimate Warp Dancer build in Cyberpunk 2077. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Starting off with perks. Now, we're going to be mainly using blades and the monowire a lot here, so it should come as no surprise to you that reflexes is going to be our priority attribute, since both our Sandeviston and all our weapons are going to feed off of that. Getting reflexes to 20 should be achieved as quickly as possible for this build. Then the other four pulls could do with a few each. Technical ability for grenades and crafting, body for a bit of an athletics bonus, intelligence for some of our cyberware later, and cool for a little bit of a sneaky stealth bonus. Though, to be honest, we're going to be so ridiculously fast and deadly with this build that stealth isn't going to be as important as you might think. They'll never see us coming anyway. So just go through and copy what I've got. It's mostly blades, perks, then anything that boosts grenade damage, athletics, and some sneaky little bonuses if you're so inclined. Of course, please take this as guidelines. If there's a particular perk you reckon I've missed or any you think are unnecessary, then tweak this list as you see fit. But I hope it's a good starting point for you. Now, on to weapons. Arguably the most important part of your Quiet Warp Dancer build will hinge on which weapons you choose to use with it. Now, a mistake I made on my Ultimate Sand Everstons Ranked video was mostly using the Warp Dancer with guns. The massive problem with this style, of course, is that whilst you, the player, are able to move 10 times faster, your guns do not follow this rule. Therefore, they still just fire really slowly now from your point of view. No, whilst guns are okay for Sand Everstons that don't slow time as much, I'll add the Militech Falcon and say to Tech Mark III. Using guns with the Warp Dancer will severely bottleneck the potential power this Sand Everston can give you. Instead, we're going to be incorporating melee weapons only, more or less, as these can still be used normally, keeping up with the slow time effect. Starting off, let's go grab ourselves the legendary monowire from either the Haywood or City Center Ripperdock. Whilst I'm generally a Grilla Arms fanboy for their insane strength and melee bonuses, I'm choosing the monowire here due primarily to the AoE that this thing has when facing off against multiple enemies. Couple this with the time slow effect and we can do a genuinely ridiculous amount of damage in a relatively short space of time. I mean, just look at how bloody effective this thing is at taking out enemies during slow-mo. This is genuinely a recording of my first ever go with this combo and I blew through this mission like a goddamn breeze. Just imagine what one could achieve after getting really good. I had other weapons on this list, but honestly, I'm not sure they're necessary. Like, Monowire and Warp Dancer might just be the most OP combination in game. I'm not exaggerating. Rating. Comment down below if you think there's other contenders. Okay, look, I'm probably getting overexcited. I'm sure there are easily others out there, which we'll learn about next week with a perfect Quiet Mark IV build. I should probably mention the other weapons though, shouldn't I? I mean, there's three empty weapon slots here and yeah, I don't know, they might get sad, unloved, unused, like the ultimate fate of every console I've ever owned. Let's bag ourselves a nice katana here. There's something about katanas that's just badass. I mean, I'd recommend switching this during fights for, well, just to feel a different variety of awesome, really. You probably want some range just in case enemies are far away or something and you want to hit them, so grab the nicest knife you can find. Throwing this can obviously be done at super speed, so just throw and forget, I suppose. The knife will slow down once it leaves your hand, but it should hit the enemy. Finally, just for the hell of it, we're going to grab a smart gun. I know, I said this was a perfect melee build, and it is, trust me. This is like an insurance policy, a backup that's nice to have just in case. The thing 
thing about these guns is bullets automatically hit enemies, and with the time slow effect of the warp dancer, you can literally fire and forget an entire magazine very quickly. Like I say, you probably won't use it much, but it's an insurance policy if for whatever reason blades and wires aren't applicable, say for flying drones or something. In terms of mods, grab whatever you want here, it's not hugely important to the build. The three I went for on the mono wire were chemical damage, simply because it's extra AoE damage and I had a legendary one in my inventory, a charged battery, highest capacity you can get hold of, then either a crit chance or damage bonus. We're really going to try and compound critical stats in this build just to get that DPS up as high as humanly possible. Finally, if you want to grab some grenades then you can, though this will depend on whether you want to be more stealthy or guns blazing. Wait, no, hold on. Uh, blades blazing? Wire blazing? Trail blaze? If you want to maximise damage, then grenades will help to achieve that, but this comes at the expense of optical camo in that slot, which will basically turn you into one of those really annoying elites with energy swords from Halo. It's up to you. The next question is which mods are we going to equip on our Warp Dancer? Now you can go several ways here and it all depends on you and your particular style. Stacking in heat sinks will bring down the cooldown time. With three legendary heat sinks and the bioconductor you can get this thing down to 9 seconds if my maths is right. Whilst this will certainly allow you to use this insane ability in combat more, it may be a good idea to stack three overclocked processors which increase duration instead. This can take your Warp Dancer from lasting 8 seconds all the way to lasting 12 which is a good boost of a third. Speaking of thirds, the third good option is to double down on crit chance and damage, with a mix of neurotransmitters and prototype chips. In the end, I liked all these options so much, I went for one cooldown, one duration, and one crit damage mod. Talk about indecisive. For the more stealth oriented amongst you, the Arasaka software fragment will mean enemies take 70% longer to notice you whilst the Sandeverstone is active, though I'm unsure how much difference this makes when you're moving at 10 times normal speed, to be honest. Now, this is where it gets really exciting. There are some insanely good bits of cyberware in this game, which really serve to support different builds. In Frontal Cortex, we have Limbic System Enhancement and Visual Cortex Support, both of which boost our crit stats, as well as Heal on Kill, which... No, I'm not explaining that one. Sorry. Circulatory System has one very important bit of cyberware, which of course is the Bioconductor, as mentioned earlier, and will reduce our cooldown by a huge 30%. Nervous System also has some really important bits to snap up. The Nano Relays will increase our Sandevistan and Kerensikov duration. I also grabbed the Kerensikov here, though the Nano Relays are the big one in this section. The main one in Integumentary System for stealth players is, of course, Optical Camo. There's no reason to get this, though, if you're planning on using grenades. I mean, really, don't, don't get it in that case. So Save your money, this is one hell of an expensive build, but oh, so worth it. Finally, there's two massive bonuses to grab from Skeleton, which are the Micro Vibration Generator and the Micro Rotors, which increase melee weapon damage and attack speed respectively. These are obviously hugely beneficial to this build, and if you have to prioritise initially, prioritise these two. I tested this build all over Night City, and with that experience, I'd like to impart to you, dear viewer, some final tips of wisdom and knowledge. Firstly, do not try to open doors with the Sandeverston active. I learned this the hard way back in my Sandeverston's ranked video, and people called me out for being an idiot, which I suppose is fair enough. Doors obviously are not imparted the superpowered capabilities of the Sandeverston, and thus simply appear to you to open at 10% of their normal speed. This can waste an entire Sandeverston use, so please, open door first, activate Warp Dancer second. Also, whilst this is an extremely OP build, one issue I still can't reconcile with the Warp Dancer is environment navigation. It is so easy in this game to get snagged up on something and when you're caught up in slow-mo the clock is ticking. I found during this elimination gig that I used to test the arm mods that I kept running into issues navigating an enclosed space. Too many corridors, twists, turns. This Sandy is definitely more oriented for more open space wherein it shines incredibly brightly. Though one potential antidote for more enclosed spaces is to exercise a bit of that smart weapon insurance policy I mentioned earlier. That could help you maybe a little bit. You know in movies where people actually scout out and make an effort to know how many enemies there are and where they'll be? How many guards on each level? How many guards on each level? How many guards on each level? Never more than 12. 
Yeah, you could benefit from that a bit, especially if your goal is to charge in like a ghost, taking out people as quickly and quietly as possible. The quick act ping would obviously be ideal here, but since this is a Sandeverston build, you'll just have to use those medieval devices called eyes to try and suss out where your foes are before attacking. Timing is everything with the Warp Dancer, and having a plan of action beforehand saves precious seconds of stupid stuff like thinking and wondering about. So what do you think? Comment down below whether you reckon this is indeed the best Sandeverston melee build or not, as well as any adjustments or improvements you reckon you'd make to this build. You guys have been excellent at pointing out any gaps of my knowledge in the past and generally helping both me to make better content and the community understand this game better, so thank you and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on this one. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more. On a little personal note, I want to give a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed thus far and I'm very pleased to announce we have achieved the goal of 1000 subs and far sooner than I initially expected. Going forward, I'm going to be aiming for new videos releasing every Thursday and Sunday at 5pm Greenwich Mean Time. We'll see how well I stick to that before trying to stretch a Tuesday release as well. This time next week, I should have a similar build video for the Quiet Mark IV. Unless this video bombs and it's clear everyone hates this type of video, in which case I might reconsider. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Sam Bram. It's 1am and I'll see you in another video. I should probably go to sleep now.